Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. Last week, we presented a comedy about the theater for you and promised for this week, love and adventure. And so, Morton Fine and David Friedkin, who wrote our opening show, The String Bow Tie, and are possibly more familiar to all of you through Broadway's My Beat, came up with a story which we think you'll like. It's called Cargo, and it's about a man and a woman. The woman, Isabel Warner. The man, Paul Kincaid. Romantic setting for a story of love and adventure, Brazil. A small port town of Metapi on the river Amazon. At the edge of the river, a dock, and tied to it, a motor launch. Standing alongside the launch, a girl, Isabel Warner. And on the launch, two men, Paul Kincaid and his deckhand assistant and friend, called Corvo. <laughs> She's the cargo, huh? She told you that? <laughs> see, see that one. Oh, senor, senor. Funny, huh? <laughs> Yeah, which is why I did not permit her aboard. <laughs> oh, oh, to stand here on the Jacalina, to look at you, the face of you right now, <laughs> and to look down on the face of her on the dock. <laughs> what do you want? You know what I want, Kincaid. What you're hired to do, so do it. I've got a man waiting for me four days away. Deliver me. Because I need the money. If I didn't, you stand here on the dock and watch the Amazon. And be careful with my suitcase. It's got my wedding gown in it. You carry it around wherever you go, huh, Isabel? With hopes? What do I do now, Kincaid? Come on, get aboard. Put my fingernails against your cheek and pull down because of the way you talk? Kill you? Because of what you've done to me? Or just stare at you and be glad you're all eaten up inside because you're a man who once cut another man's throat? Get aboard. Put a knife in him and killed him. And he was my brother. A bum. Yes. A river drifter who needed to be killed. Your brother. Yes, and you did it. And this is what it's done to you. Eaten. I'm glad. I used to wish you would die. I don't anymore. A man like you, a strong man, a long time dying. I'm glad. You're going to stand here and Listen, talk? Listen, Kincaid. You'll take me aboard your boat and you'll take me to Pombal and I'll get married. You? Senor Julio? You're not kidding, are you? No. I'll marry Julio because he asked me politely. He bought me a drink once in Point Rosa. And, and then, then he said he was lonely. Times like this, Kincaid, like before, what do I do now to hurt you? Mark Julio said marriage. Julio said he would send for me. He did. He sent you. Take me to him. From Atapi, where we started, to Pombalas, four days by launch. One day of it on the Amazon to Hurupa, a river town. Three more days down the Toncantines River. And there was this. Enough money to buy enough gas to Hurupa, then rely on credit. But mostly there was this, the day and the night it took to get there. Twenty-four hours at the green edge of the world before you go over the side of it. Sail it a hundred times like I have and wonder what it would look like the next time. The heat would always be there and the stink a million things that grew into each other and choked each other and dripped and grew and died and sprang to life again and grew. See it till the night comes. Then pick a clump of black and watch it. Wavers, becomes defined, becomes trees and lianas and green. And it's day again in Rivertown, Gurupa. And the man of the river town is named Brady. Laddie, laddie, it's always a pleasure to extend you credit. Who's the lady up for it? Cargo. I'll need enough gas to get me to Pombal, Grady. Surely, surely, indeed. <laughs> Oi, Sandro! Gas for the Jacqueline. Give me a hand, Corvo. Yes, si, senor. Yeah. Who's the lady? Cargo. Yeah, she said, you said, laddie. I, uh, wonder. Hey, where are you going? Oh, to offer the lady a drink. You want a drink, lady? No. Oh, now, here, I'll wipe the bottle top for you. Get out of here, Grady. Oh, are you wanting my gas for credit? You know I'll pay you. Oh, surely, surely, laddie. Uh, what's your name, little dear? Drink and tell me. Here's the bottle. You get the message, mister. Uh, it's been done before, little dear. The bottle slapped to the floor and the haughty lady. Well, I pick the bottle up and I try it again. Now, tell her, Grady, your name. Leave her alone, Grady. Oh, but I'm a man with a curiosity who sells gas for credit to friends of mine. Isabel Warner. Isabel, now. And Warner. Of him. Are you of him, little dear? What's he talking about? She's his brother. <laughs> that tidy one. Sister to the brother Kincaid killed and you ride on his boat. Haughty. Now, there's a one. Get him away from oh, me. Oh, no, 
No, little dear, he's in a vice, Paul Kincaid is. I'm a lonely man in a lonely place and I'm needed now for the gas. Listen to me, Grady. You listen to me. It's a thing of strangeness. You, Paul Kincaid, to her. Killer of her brother for a woman in a jungle town. Now you to her. Tell me. What? Were you there? What, dearie? When he killed my brother? Yes! In Porto de Moss it was, down the river. Tell me. Tell me, Grady. I've heard ten different stories about it, and I want to know. Oh, over a bit of prettiness it was. A pretty thing named Jacqueline, the same as the launch. And a thing to kill her. Shut up, Grady. You serve your time for it, laddie. Forget it. The dear little one and me's getting on. Come on. Come on, drink, little dear. We'll talk or whatever. Drink. Kincaid. You begged, Grady. You really did. <laughs> Fighting you want, laddie, eh? That time for it. Now I'll warm my knife with you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> He'll drown, Kincaid. This man will fish him out. Does it hurt where he cut you? He'll be all right. Corvo, help me. This is the deep one, Paul. Another range, Grady, would have opened the place where your soul is. Stuff it closed. Here. Take the long drink. and hold the room to the light, then bring it down. And through curve of glass, the girl's face. Cargo girl. Purio's girl, sister of a man you've killed. Her face, watching Corvo work the knife wound. Isabel's face, stilled in emerald moonlight. <laughs> You're drinking alone, Mr. Kincaid? It seems to Pour me... the lady a drink, Corvo. She's been through a lot. <laughs> And her laughter mixes good with the night wilderness. Drifts inland on mist wind. Empties into the great fountains of jungle ferns. And dies there. And one more twisting of pain and Corvo finishes. So kick her over now. Take the wheel. Head the Jacqueline into rotting shore currents into sweep of forest river. Cargo or bride for Mark Curio, plantation owner, coffee grower, lonely fellow. Biting his nails against the time when an end to loneliness walks up his private dock with a suitcase in her hand. Contents bridal gown. Four days away for Curio. And for me, two days to where the Tonkantine spills its jungle silt into the Amazon. And the dead city at its mouth, Porto de Moss. And walk alone through the dead city city of ruins, dead city of a memory, and from a tangle of wilderness where once a street was, pluck the moist wild orchid, walk some more, to fringe of lost city, to a place you've kept clear where memory lies, where the dead girl lies, where grave is, kneel, lay the wild orchid on it, press your face to her. What's that you're doing, Mr. Kincaid? <laughs> what? I asked what you were doing, Mr. Kincaid. Get out of here! Get out! Such a tender gesture. The wild orchid and the attitude, kneeling, so gentle. Your face against the earth. I told you, get out. Get away from here. Your private place, Mr. Kincaid? Your lonely place. No trespassers allowed, huh? Come on, I'll take you back to the launch. No. You stay here. As long as you want, I'll go back alone. Kincaid. Yes. I'm sorry. For what? I'm sorry I followed you. Forget it. I'm sorry I said what I did. I'm sorry I stood there and watched. More than that, I'm ashamed. I told you, forget it. Girl, you loved her. Must have been very much. You wouldn't know. Jacqueline? You need to know, huh? 
girl you killed my brother for? Yes. I'll tell you because you need to know. Yes. Jacqueline. A girl I buried in that grave. A girl who wore a jungle orchid in her hair and some scarlet things of linen about her. Kincaid. That girl, Jacqueline. Kincaid. Dead now. Like her city. Like me. And the flower for her hair. In the jungle grave. My place. Like you said, my... Uh... Mr. Kincaid, what's the matter with you? My place. You're... Mine. Here. 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 And from somewhere deep in forest, the sudden screeching of glee and the furtive scurrying sounds and moon gleam on a slow line of ants. Fever or death, and not care which, a flower had been placed. And then the remembered motion, the sway and rock of the Jacqueline, and try to get to the wheel, and be held back. You just lie there, Mr. McCaig. Corvo's doing all right. The Jacqueline! Here, here. Let me handle this one, Senorita Warren. Let me help. I want Catalina! to. Ah, two days now you have been at his side. Uh -huh. And this one appalls. You will not know what to do. Drink, Paul. And cold, cold of fever. And of a base dead in swarming earth and decay of wild blossoms on a forest grave. Cold. Oh. Oh. And the touching of a new warmth. And it holds you close. And there's another face. And its breath is on your cheek, against your eyes, against your mouth. And the new fever dream takes hold. Where is the gentle face? Rests its warmth at your side. Where was death? Where its grave? And not remember. Paul. Paul, wake. Paul, pobrecito, try to wake. Paul. What? Tombal. We are here, Paul. Tied to Julio's dog. You understand what I say, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Tombal. Julio. And this? The Senor Julio approaches to us for his cargo. For you, Senorita Isabel Warner. Yes. The fever, sickness, cargo. Three days? Yeah, ask the senorita. She will count also for you the nights at your side to warm you when you were cold, to make cool you when you were burned. Was it you? Your face? The fever dream. You? You were very sick, Paul. Paul. Your suitcase, senorita. With it, the bride's gown that you will wear for your Uriel. I bring it for you. Paul. Wait. Listen to me. No. Be still and listen to me. Something you said when you were in fever. When I did what Garvo told you. Something you whispered she against... She touches a man's face so gently. Does she not, Kincaid, my bride-to-be? My Isabel? No, no. Do not rise to me, Isabel. Finish saying to Kincaid your farewell, and I will pay him for my cargo. He has fever, hero. He's very sick. He needs a doctor. Oh, your wish, Isabel? Then I shall get for him a doctor, and Kincaid will be brought to my house. Forget it, Corio. Corvo will take care of me. We'll get out as soon as... No, we... no, no, Kincaid. The doctor, the things of my house, the gentleness of Isabel, and you will be well for the wedding of Isabel to me. Corio... By Wednesday, the priest. And you will be to me... The end of loneliness to me. <laughs> Come, Isabel. Come, bride. are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Cargo. 
Science chalked up its biggest year against polio in 1952 by discovering a temporary immunizing agent that already has saved many lives. To help continue this work, the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis asks more urgently that you join the March of Dimes in 1953. River town of Pombal, end of journey. And what was in it, this, acres of coffee under cultivation, hovels, shacks, and a palace a quarter mile from the river. The Senor's Palace, Senor Mark Jurio, lord and master and rich enough to have built a thing of gleaming white stone, like something he'd seen in Portugal, he'd once told me, with mosque-like roof and minarets, with gardens and pools of speckled sunlight where strange birds came, the place where I got well again. Well, let me see. Yeah. You look better, Paul. Much better. Yeah, I feel fine. What day is it? <laughs> you always ask. Each day. You share the excitement with me? It's Tuesday, isn't it? <laughs> One more day. Tell me something, Julio. How come... Well... Isabel? Uh-huh. Can you get up? Sure, I've been walking around all morning. Why, what? To here, to the window. No. Down there in the garden. Look. Isabel. She's of beauty, that's why. Oh. And of gentleness and of compassion. Once in Point Gross, I drank with her and talked, and all these things of her I knew and understood at once. Ah, but you must know. What? How she has nursed you, near to you more than to me she has been since you are here. I know. Julio. See? You love her? She is a... Yes, I know of beauty. You love her, Julio? Tomorrow in the afternoon I marry her. Now, from you an answer. Yeah, the much time she spends with you. I'm leaving tomorrow. In the morning. Good. I'm happy that you are that well, Paul. Paul? Is that you? Yeah, over here. You in the darkness or another shadow. I wasn't sure. His house chokes in on me. I had to get out. Walk with me, Paul. Away from it. All right. There's a place past where he's caged the wild birds, a grove. I know. What? I've watched you there. You? You saw me there, Paul? Oreo took me to a window and told me to look, and it's where you were. And when he got out of the room, I came back to the window, and you were still there. And I watched you as you walked. And when you lay down and thought there was no one to see you, I watched. And a thing Hurio had said... What, Paul? What did he say? That you were of beauty. Your boy has a twisted way with words. You're right. I'm not beautiful. You want me to tell you? I have to tell you? That tomorrow I get out of Pamba, tomorrow you... Not beautiful. Not like the other one. What? Not her beauty. No scarlet thing to wear on my shoulders. Just this. What I am. Listen to me. Cargo. Cargo that gave you the chance to stop... She's dead. Me. She's dead. Say it once more, Paul. She's dead. But your love for her, not dead. Will you listen to me? I'll listen, Paul. Jacqueline. Only this now, a launch. A boat I have that runs the jungle river and the girl she was named after. Something that was found in fever and lost in another kind of fever and made dead. Isabel. Isabel. I'll wear the wild blossom in my hair. Wherever you say, wait, 
there, I'll wait. I love you. I will be Jacqueline. Whatever woman she was to you, whatever woman's thing she did for you. This woman. Only this woman. Paul? Someone must have been watching. Someone. Wait. Senor Julio! Senor Julio! In the garden! I saw them in the garden! Paul? They'll kill us. Listen. I don't care. What are you talking about? I don't care, Paul. Whatever happens now... What's going to happen is that we're going to get the boat and get to Matapi. If you say we will... Come on. There's the river. The boat's down. Corvo. Corvo. Dead. Shot dead. Oh. And the boat gone. I was wrong. What? I said I didn't care. I was wrong. Whoever killed Corvo took the boat upstream into the jungle. He can't go far. Why not? Up that way, rapids. There's only one place a boat could go upstream. About ten miles down, just before the rapids start, the river branches off, and there's a stream that could take the boat. But not for long, less than a mile. We'll never find it. We have it. to find it. Upstream is only jungle. We have to find it. If we don't, we'll rot. We'll find it. How? Follow the river. Yes? We'll find it, Isabel. I promise you. Yes. It was easy at first. The rim of the river was sand, a long, slow curve into night. An hour of it, no talk, and no boat. Then the beach narrowed, and then the river became a twisting tunnel of darkness. Endless. Vines and creepers and roots that were suddenly there against you, holding you. Two hours, no boat. And the river became the land, and the land the river. And Isabel falls, gets up again, walks through screen of jungle and night and terrible doubt and fear. Seven hours. And it happened. No. Isabel. I... I can't. We'll rest. Just for a while. Paul. Yes. Why? You mean why didn't he kill us back there where he killed Corvo? Yes. Wednesday there'll be a priest there. The priest will hear about a dead native. It'll be easy to explain away, but a dead white man and a dead white girl, it won't be easy. And you think he's waiting? Him or someone. And we'll die in the jungle anyhow. Paul. Listen. You hear that? What? The rapids. Listen. I'm all right. I can go on. And that was near the end of it. There, before the torrent began, a stream. The banks of it, sandy and easy. Walk. And steam. And heat. And there was a boat. There, Paul. Kincaid! Whoa! It was, Uriel. Wait here, Isabel. No. I said wait. For what, Paul? He's got a gun. Wait for what, Paul? For me. No. I'm coming with you. That's the way it is. I'm coming with you. Good morning. Hello, Horio. And good morning to you. Bride. Oh. Oh, <laughs> such a bedraggled bride. So it was a mistake, <laughs> Curio. Let us go back. Kincaid. What? That's your boat, the Jacqueline. Now, why don't you try to take So you can shoot me in the back when I board her? Curio, I want to talk to you. Your wedding morning. My present to you. Talk. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> sorry. I'll stay with you, Curio. <laughs> Let Paul... Let him go? Oh. No. You'll see there's nothing I won't do. Bride, bride. Let him go. He'll die, bride. And you. You think you can shame me with this river rat, with this jungle filled with this... Die. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'll kill you, Julio. I'll kill you. Isabel. 
Isabel. Hurts, Paul. Am I... Am I going to die, Paul? Larry shot me. It hurts. I don't want to die. You won't die. Take me home. And I lifted her. And I carried her across the sand and the little piece of water to the boat, the Jacalina, the name of a boat, and made a place for Isabel on the deck, in the shade. And then I turned the boat around, downstream. And then a thing happened. From somewhere far away, a small breeze rode a mist up the river and lay against the boat. And Isabel smiled. That was once a choke of darkness was a million trees, clean and new in the morning. And Isabel said a thing. I love you, Paul. And we were going home. Cargo, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. Maybe Millie won't succeed in getting the boss's son, but you'll succeed in laughing when you meet Millie, starring Elena Verdugo. You can hear it every Thursday night over most of these same CBS radio stations. And now, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. Our thanks tonight for a beautiful script to Morton Fine and David Friedkin. And to the fine actors and friends who made it all come to life. John Daner, who neglected his picture career long enough to play Mark Hurio. And Ben Wright, who returned from being a French policeman in Beirut by sunrise two weeks ago to play the villainous gasoline seller Grady tonight. And Anthony Barrett, friend and assistant to Paul Kincaid. Next week, Anthony Ellis suggested a story which we liked and which he has written for us called A Public Furlough about a soldier on leave. Me. You. And a motion picture actress he wants a date with. You. Me. And that's what's going to happen next week. Thank you all for listening, and good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed by Fred Steiner and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble. Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Walsh speaking. <laughs>